oh, this is me, uh, COVID style Zoom uh, chatting in my robe. I love this. <laughs> yeah, we had it going with the uh, other, you know, cast, but when I'm solo, I don't know if it works as well, but you know what, I'm gonna make it work. I was gonna say, you know what, this is what I want to wear in interviews, you're doing it. <laughs> Yeah, get comfortable. Get comfy. Yeah, look at, there we go. Perfect. We shot the movie here in Arizona, so we're kind of doing some promotional stuff here. And that brings us to the movie, a new holiday themed rom-com called Funny Thing About Love. How would you describe this film, first of all? What's your what's your elevator pitch? It's a rom-com, a little Hallmark style. It's like a Hallmark movie with comedy in it. Um, and, you know, actual tried comedy. And it works. I think we have a lot, it's, um, you know, uh, an ensemble piece with a lot of funny actors and a big family gathering around Thanksgiving during the Thanksgiving a break. Is that a good elevator pitch? I don't yeah. Why is that one? But yeah. Well, the thing is, like, it's you know, it, there's like this this web in here, but everyone kind of seems to be playing almost like a bit of a version of themselves. Are do you feel like you're a bit of Charlie? Oh, a hundred percent. Like I was one of the things that drew me to it. I was I didn't realize until after I think I took the role, but I was like, you know what? I I've almost been waiting for this, but I am in, you know, in, in real life I am a dad, I'm married, and I have not yet played a dad. I think every actor out there at some point is like, at what point do I start playing a dad? You know, just you know, age-wise and everything, I was like, no, finally, it's like, this is uh, what I get to do. And so all of that I connected with, and Charlie's kind of a big kid who was still obsessed with his childhood. And that's very much me. I, I just, I love my child. I loved my childhood. All the things that like kind of made me when I was a kid, I'm obsessed with now. So all the uh, Thundercat and G.I. Joe talk, uh, Star Wars, it's that was me. This is like, you know, it's like a wholesome feel good movie. What's your favorite feel good movie? What's the one you put on, you know, after Thanksgiving dinner, relaxes you, clears your mind. What's that movie for you? After Thanksgiving, I'll probably go play video games maybe. But if I had this Thanksgiving, we just had, I watched Dumb and Dumber right after. Cause this was my brother, my younger brother had that tradition. So I feel like, you know what? I'll join you in this tradition. We'll watch Dumb and Dumber. but. I don't know if I have a go-to feel good. I love, um, uh, well, there's lots of feel good. I don't know if I have my go-to feel good movie. It's just, um, I guess from the 90s, when I was a kid, I watched Cutting Edge a lot. I loved Cutting Edge. I don't know why, it's random, but <laughs> that was, uh, that's a great one. What does it feel like to be that for people? Because Napoleon Dynamite is a comfort favorite movie for a lot of people. Oh, that's sweet. That's where the fattening comfort food. That's great. Um, <laughs> we've got high caloric uh, um, input. I guess. Uh, yeah. uh, it's great. I think it's, it, I never really saw that coming until like, you know, people said, realizing like, oh, a lot of people tell me it's our favorite holiday film. I was like, it's not a Christmas movie. It was like, no, no, no. You know, Christmas time is you watch Christmas movies, but you also watch your like go to just like something that you like watching with other people. Mm -hmm. And that's really cool. And I realized, you know, Napoleon kind of had that party feel like people when it first came out would go see it with their family members and they bring more and more family members to the theater. And I was like, oh yeah, that is like the holidays. You just want to sit down and watch something that maybe you've seen a hundred times, but you don't care because that's what the holidays are about, kind of reliving those fun old memories. Yeah, me and my dad have this where like I come home and he's like, I'm gonna put on something we always used to watch and one of them is Blades of Glory. We always watch Blades oh, awesome. of Glory. I love that movie. Really good one. It's so funny. I don't know, it cracks me up. I love it. Uh, I wonder what Jim, Jim, Jimmy McElroy is up to today. <laughs> Uh, he's still probably uh, eating Skittles and uh, working. He's probably coaching uh, little kids now. Don't they all end up coaching, but still trying to relive the glory days? Yeah, I just like thinking about that time. Was it not so weird when Jay-Z and Kanye used a part of that movie in their song? We were out bowling last night with the cast of the film and that music, that song came on and like, my buddy was like, dude, this is the song. I didn't even recognize, I don't even know the song that well, but I was like, oh yeah, that's right. And uh, yeah, it was it was just a very random little anecdote that, you know, 
oh, you're in that song. Oh, cool. All right. I don't know what it has to do with the song at all, but it's just great. It's so random, but it's just like just a, a seal of pop culture in time. Yeah, I love yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> I I think it was like a year ago you mentioned that you'd be open to like a Napoleon Dynamite sequel. I'm so curious. Like, I feel like that has to happen at some point. As sitting around at like, you know, the last year or so, has that stirred up any more ideas? Has there been any movement on that? Or was that just I, like no, question and interview type thing? No, it's like, I, you know, I mean, everybody's talked about it. I don't know if there's been any more steam gained over the last, It's it's been the same for the last 17 years since the movie came out. Wow, I just came up with that. Uh, yeah, who knows, who knows? I, I, I always tell people, I don't know if the world of Napoleon is dead. I think there's some, whether it's an animated show or, or uh, I mean, we did an animated show, uh, but I think another one or something, I, I don't know if the world of Napoleon is dead. That's all I can say. I love that you kind of embrace it. You know, sometimes I talk to people that have that thing and they, they're they like kind of want to get away from it, but like you still seem very much in touch with everyone. You do Q and A's all the time. I love that. Well, thank you. Yeah, no, it's it's fun. I love uh, Napoleon. It would suck if that movie was not good. And I, I really like it. You really like it. <laughs> as, as someone starring in a rom-com, you've been married for like 20 years. What's your, what's your biggest go-to advice? I think it's described pretty well in the movie, but like loyalty and um, and just, you know, it really is putting aside your um, the pettiness and putting away my biggest piece of advice because is, is just self learn <sighs> selflessness. You know, you really have to like, it's not sacrificing what you like. It's not about that. It's more just like, don't sweat the petty things and don't pet the sweaty things. <laughs> I had a feeling that's where that was going. <laughs> that's a good piece of advice I heard. And I, 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 uh, I'm all about that. No, that's I like petting the sweaty things. Don't sweat the petty. But really, it's just putting away, you know, it's so easy to get hung up on the tiny little things. You focus on the big and what you and what you love about them and you keep going in that direction and you really especially after so many years of marriage it really it it gets better it gets better because you can if if you stick to it and you uh and you really just focus on like you know what's amazing you you find so much happiness that way i love that that that's good advice um and just last question here i i um you know, I, I keep using the word wholesome to describe this movie because it does feel it's like a very wholesome movie. What do, what do you look for in roles these days? What's something that sticks out for you that that's important to you? You know, every project I do, I, I want it to be different. Uh, it's got to be interesting and it can be a mix of like, ooh, the project is, is interesting or maybe the role is really fun or maybe the people I get to work with. Um, this had a little mix of like, I, you know, Brooke White, who plays my wife in the film. I had worked with her on a project before on one of her music videos and she reached out to me and I didn't know anybody else, but I loved working with her. And I was like, oh, it'd be fun to work with some, a, a few of the other uh, cast members I kind of knew of. And so I was like, oh, it'd be fun to work with them. Uh, and then sometimes, you know, in other roles, uh, and certainly the wholesomeness of this film, I love. I love wholesome, I mean, you know, having kids and having stuff that I can recommend to my parents is like, hey, you guys will love this movie. It's very uh, wholesome and sweet. But I, I think after doing something like Napoleon, where I, it's, we didn't really set out to make something wholesome, but we have had so many years, years and years of people telling us how they love, this is their favorite family film and they love it. And, and so that is an important thing to me. I love having that element in a lot of the work I do. Not everything I do, but you know, it's a really fun one to have. Well, thank you so much for your time and congrats on the movie. I believe it's out now. Yes. Oh no, it's coming out tomorrow. Coming out oh, tomorrow. We, uh, whatever, if we're live, it's coming out Friday, December 3rd. Uh, iTunes, Amazon, all the, you know, VOD platforms. And I think it'll be, it's coming out in some theaters and you know, certain markets, you'd have to look it up if it's near you. Yes. So it's a little bit of everywhere. Everyone should see it, can see it. And uh, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.